Oh my god, there's someone out there who doesn't know what I think of some random 70s B movie. Ah! <sighs> oh good, there's a camera. Blue Sunshine is a 1977 horror movie from director Jeff Lieberman, and it's based on a book. Because what movie isn't? I mean, especially nowadays where everything's based off of superheroes. But even that's a comic book. Prior to this, Lieberman had made a couple of horror movies, including one starring the always dependable George Kennedy called Just Before Dawn, a slasher in the woods type movie. The plot centers around a character named Jerry Zipkin, who's played by Zalman King, and he has to absolve himself of a murder he didn't commit. But who's the actual killer, you may ask, if you're going along with my shtick? A bunch of drug-crazed lunatics, but not just any drug-crazed lunatics, ones who have taken the titular LSD called Blue Sunshine. It makes their hair fall out and they become psychopathic murderers. And that's where the tagline comes in. Did you ever hear the phrase blue sunshine? Try hard to remember, your life may depend on it. It rests in that somewhat beloved genre of what I would like to call hippie exploitation. Uh, specifically, acid casualties turn murderers, but unlike movies like Snuff, or I Drink Your Blood, or even something that's an homage to that era of movies such as Mandy, this one feels like an LSD PSA worst nightmare of somebody from the FBI or the PMRC. Man, that's a lot of acronyms. To scare the children. But this is the flip side of that, and it's gone to its logical conclusion, and this is the sort of sneering, sardonic, sarcastic, something else beginning with S, response to that. I actually saw this poster a couple times over the years, and it always sort of stuck with me. I've always liked posters and album covers that have uh, a prominent warped face kind of going uh, that usually tends to be uh, good albums or at least entertaining posters and it piqued my interest and I watched it one day and without going into it with any kind of reservations or what to expect I gotta say I liked it more than I thought it would and I think I like it more than most people who should like it more. This is one of those rare instances where it's a schlocky B-movie horror film that actually deserves more praise and attention than it gets. I think at this point we're kind of overwrought with movies that are, you know, they're entertaining to somebody, I guess, because they're so stupid, but God bless, you know, Vinegar Syndrome and uh, Draft House, but they put out these absolutely garbage movies where it's kind of like, ha ha ha, it's funny because it sucks, and that's entertaining for some people. This one, I guess, falls too much into a nether region where it's, not as crazy enough or as incompetent enough that it'll interest enough people, but it's still too weird for your casual horror movie fan. But where are the people who are saying, ooh, this movie needs a reappraisal. Oh, it's so good. Oh, I love, you know, Manson family inspired murder movies. And by now you folks probably who watch this channel know me. I love my 70s grime, 70s movies in general. I don't always love or seek out 70s horror movies. There's some I like and some I don't. This one, on the other hand, it's just fun, and it pushes all the right buttons. You got a conspiracy plot, Zalman King's acting is completely unhinged and insane, it's silly, it's also actually kind of creepy at times. I love the scene where the mom goes bald and the kids are just freaking out and she's on the verge of actually murdering them. Even the movie's transitions are kind of interesting, like the opening prologue, it keeps kind of panning up and down from the moon and establishes all the characters within the first couple of minutes. Or that transition where it does a bit of a flashback to the dealer who initially handed out this blue sunshine to people and then it uh, superimposes into a modern uh, poster of him because 10 years later he's become this respected politician who's kind of swept his past under the rug. And then we get to get into the uncovering a conspiracy stuff, which, you know, is another thing I love, like with Parallax View or The Conversation or Society. This movie's just very cheeky and it is able to successfully pull off that riding the line of being comical and at the same time pretty creepy and terrifying. And besides the surface level scare tactic of the dangers of LSD plot, which is already fun, the fact that it all gets tied back to the dealer 10 years later being a successful politician 
leads me to believe the movie is also about the death of idealism of the 60s, giving way to conforming and becoming a docile zombie as the late 70s made their way into the consumerist corporate 80s. Or maybe it's actually ragging on hippies who fried their brains in a non-ironic way. Or maybe it's doing both at once. The movie never overstays its welcome either. In fact, it ends pretty abruptly, which may leave some viewers feeling a little bit unresolved. So all in all, that's a yes for me, dog. So all in all, that's a yes for me, dog. You can do much worse than this movie. And again, I think there's, I'm usually tougher on movies like this. I saw a movie the other day from the 70s called The Candy Snatchers, and I was like, yeah, this is stupid. This is lost for a reason. This is why this movie should be buried alive, much like the main character is for most of the movie. Anyways, that's Blue Sunshine. Folks, take care of yourselves. Don't do too much acid. And I mean, me personally, I've never done acid, contrary to what everybody uh, initially approaches me with. Oh, you've... This guy, you've definitely done, you know, shrooms and acid, right? No, I'm just spaced out on my own, thank you very much. Stay sexy.